That's my street on the north side. I'm the author. I get to put my street in there. Uh, and I wanted to include it because, you know, the way the media covers the north side in this area is kind of the way they cover Baghdad. Uh, <laughs> you know, if something goes wrong, they're on it. Their sirens are going, they're on it. The fires, they're covering that. The real story of the north side, that it's really a pretty great place to live. And people walk around and raise their family, and uh, that doesn't get covered so much. So that's what I talk about a lot in my book. It, it's a very old-fashioned neighborhood that I live in. Um, and I should tell you a little more about myself. Some of you know a lot, a lot about me. I, I kind of tell all this over the years, but... I moved to Pittsburgh in 88. I had grown up on Long Island. And uh, I spent 10 years in Virginia after college, most of it in Roanoke, Virginia, which if, if you went due south from Pittsburgh through West Virginia and came out the other side, you would hit Roanoke in the Blue Ridge Mountains. And I much preferred the pace of life in Roanoke to the frenzied life I, I'd see on Long Island when I'd come back. But there were all these things I missed about Long Island and New York. Uh, I missed, you know, universities, professional theater, corner bars, Major League Baseball, kind of an irony that I chose Pittsburgh. Uh, I, uh, I, missed, I missed people who knew that St. Patrick's Day was a holiday, for God's sake. So, so then I got this job in Pittsburgh, and I realized I'd stumbled into what I call the third bear of cities. Uh, it had all those things I missed about New York and very little of the hassles. So Pittsburgh, I want to celebrate in this book. It's not too big, not too small, not too hard, not too soft. To me, Pittsburgh is just right, just about the right size. And I stumbled on this street in 89 or 90, and as soon as I saw it, I wanted to live there. And if you remember 89 or 90, it was a... It was a a strange time in Pittsburgh. We were trying to, I was arriving as Pittsburgh was trying to redefine itself. Uh, we'd just come up, you know, they were coming up off the mat, uh, 130,000 manufacturing jobs lost in a decade, half of them in steel uh, in this region in a span of 10 years. Remarkable. I, I, I don't have to tell any of you what those days were like, but uh, it was a very strange time for Pittsburgh because it was the very time that America was ascendant and became the lone superpower. So as our country was going this way, Pittsburgh seemed to be going this way, and we felt, I think, a little disconnected from, from the country. But now the rest of the country is, is going to learn lessons from Pittsburgh, I believe, uh, because we came through it, and, we, and I think we're, we're, we're stronger yet. Um, but everybody told me in those days not to buy on the north side. Uh, yeah, everybody. Uh, but I wanted to walk to uh, Pirate Games. Th this was a very long time ago. The Pirates were good. Uh, 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 Barry Bonds was skinny. Uh, and, and so I bought this house, uh, which actually isn't in this picture, but uh, I bought a house on this street. And, um, and I, I soon realized, if, if any of you have ever lived in a, in a neighborhood like this, how the architecture of a street affects the social aspect. When, when houses are this close together, you have a lot of casual meetings with your neighbors, and you, and you meet a lot of people very quickly. And uh, what I talk about in the book is what a friend of mine, uh, I, I call it the parable of the garage door opener. Uh, <laughs> I got this guy in my street named Tom Barbush, who's a salesman, and uh, he's a very funny guy, very conservative guy. He's one of these guys who quotes the Rat Pack kind of the way other people quote scripture. You know, he's, he's always talking about what Sinatra would do and stories about Sammy Davis and Dean Martin, but he's a guy who knows how to enjoy life, and, uh, and he's, he's raised two beautiful girls uh, who are very successful now, and... Um, he and his wife, uh, Fran. And one day, Tom, as I said, he's a salesman. He was in Allegheny General Hospital, and he was commiserating with this friend of his about his friend's recent divorce. And, uh, 
and the and the guys, you know, talking about how he's having trouble meeting people, and and he can't get three sentences out in a row because people keep coming up to Tom saying, "Hello, hey Tom, how you doing, Tom? Tom, how's the kids? How's the wife?" And finally, the guy says, "What? How do you know so many people?" And Tom said, "Do you own a garage door opener?" <laughs> and uh, the guy said, "Yeah." He said, "That's your problem." So what are you talking about? He said, "Well." You drive home, you go into your garage, you shut your car door, you go in your kitchen door. How many people have you met? None. I go home on a good night. I'm locked out of the house. I walk down the street, see who's on the porch, have a beer. People walk by. I, I said, that, that, you got to move to a place without a garage door opener. And, and Pittsburgh is blessed with a lot of old-fashioned neighborhoods in and out of the city like this. A lot of neighborhoods with porches. Um, I, I love it here. So I talk about that. I talk about the walkability in my neighborhood. My wife works at Allegheny General Hospital. I work downtown. Uh, we have one car. We put maybe 7,000 miles a year on it. We walk everywhere. We walk to work. Our daughter's grade school is in the park across from the aviary. Uh, uh, that's a 10-minute. We walk to the coffee shop, the pizza place, the Thai restaurant, submarine shop, corner bar, children's. I mean, my kids growing up, they, they thought every kid was raised this way. We, we walked to the Children's Museum, the Carnegie Museum, uh, Science Center, the National Aviary, baseball games, football games, the, the river steps. It's been a fantastic place, which is a story you never hear about the north side. Um, and, but I think America is starting to value these kinds of neighborhoods again. And for a long time, we didn't. And... I want to talk about that in this next slide. Uh, this is Manchester in 1937. This is uh, on the north side. Now, keep in mind, this is the height of the Depression, so uh, it was a rough time in America, but it seems like a reasonably prosperous street. It's, uh, you know, it's got an Isley's, it's got a drugstore, it's got cars on the street. I don't know what time of day this photo was taken. But you can see it might be like Carson Street or Murray Avenue in Squirrel Hill or, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Butler Street in Lawrenceville. But here's what it looks like today. This is one of the reasons Pittsburgh has lost half its population. Uh, it's decisions we made collectively in the 50s and 60s, uh, which I'm not saying are right or wrong, but... We did make these decisions, so we should not be surprised if Pittsburgh has half as many people as it did in 1950. Keep your eye on that, that pole that's holding up the Coca-Cola sign, because that's the only thing that's still left. That's, uh, that's what it looks like today. Same street. Well, it's the same street. That's Route 65 going north to, uh, to Swickley. And, uh, you know, it's very nice. A lot of nice houses up that road, but... You can't really be surprised when people aren't living in a place where a bus is going by 55 miles an hour. Okay. All right, this is going to be the same place looking north. Looking north, keep your eye on that building in the upper left. That's the only thing still left. Boom. And they're knocking that down now. Um, so that's, that's what we did in Pittsburgh. 